But the thing that's most exciting to me is not what it helps existing businesses do, but the fact that it unlocks the ability for a lot of people to create businesses that otherwise they already had the idea for, but couldn't get the developers. Like I fundamentally believe that 10% of all the SaaS services that that have uh, are yet to be created have been created so far. Um, so yeah. there's just going to be so many, maybe they might be much smaller. They're not going to be like the Facebooks of the world or the Oracles of the world. But I think there's so many niche things that are just waiting for uh, for this capability to be available so that people can get this money. The reason this this thing is exploding is because there's going to be, next, in the next couple of years, going to be a billion people that grew up using software and they don't just want to be beholden to people that can create software. For me, uh, that's the most inspiring thing because now the software, it's not just a platform, it's, it's providing hope and opportunity and, and both of those things are priceless. So when platforms, specifically no code, can do that, I think that's the real magic and secret sauce. I think no code is, it's a, I think it sometimes gets a, a, a bad take because yeah. people are like, oh, you know, you can't build great things with no code. I don't really think that's the point of it. I think no code is really about empowerment. It's about helping folks who have ideas, who want to get a job done, be able to do that stuff. I think one of the common misconceptions about the no code movement is that we will no longer need code or we will no longer need traditional development. I think that it'll stay in place, but I think that those sorts of shops, those sorts of people who are doing that freelance work will start to see clients come to them that are a little bit further along because they've made a version one of the product. Uh, she gave an incredible TEDx talk back in 2015. 